It's a new week and so it's a new animal. This week we have the disturbingly named black swallower fish. The name comes mainly from the colour of the fish, a brownie black, and from its amazing ability to swallow prey up to 10 times its mass and twice its length. Twice its length isn't actually that much, though, only reaching 10 inches long, but it's still impressive for its size. The black swallower fish falls under the classic bracket of strange and bizarre deep sea fish that you never want to see, but are in fact swimming happily around in the abyss right this second. The black swallower enjoys tropical and subtropical regions of the ocean. Not that it matters much, as they tend to live around 700 to 2,700 metres down in the mesopelagic and bathypelagic zones, where there is little to no light. The mesopelagic zone ends at the point where there is no light, and the entire bathypelagic is devoid of sunlight. Their range extends quite far into the North Atlantic, being found most commonly near the shores of North America, particularly around the Cayman Islands and Bermuda, but many have also been found off South Africa. Their deep sea homes make them hard to find. They are rarely caught live on camera, so most records of the fish come from when they are caught as bycatch or wash up dead on beaches. Their diet consists of mostly fish, and this time not ones that are smaller than itself. Eating fish up to 10 times the mass causes a lot of strain on the black swallower's stomach, which can sometimes result in them tearing, killing the fish. The black swallower really doesn't hold back, they eat every part of the fish they swallow, and they use their sharp, thin teeth to latch onto their prey. If splitting stomachs wasn't enough, sometimes when these fish overdo it and swallow something too big, they can die in another slower way. If their prey is too big, it may start to decompose before the stomach acid of the black swallower has had enough time to break it down. When the fish decomposes, it releases gas which fills up the stomach and causes the black swallower to float upwards towards the surface. Sometimes this isn't fatal, but most of the time the fish can be killed from anything from new predators to decompression sickness, and yes, fish can get decompression sickness. This is actually how many of the specimens have been found, bobbing dead on the surface of the water having eaten something too big. Not much is really known about their breeding behaviour due to the difficulty involved in studying these deep dwelling fish. What we do know is that like almost all other fish, I'm sure there are a few, just a few, that have to be special and break the mould. They are oviparous, meaning they lay eggs in the ocean. These eggs tend to float around the pelagic regions of the earth, meaning in the open ocean. These eggs are tiny, only about one millimetre in diameter, and therefore face many dangers in the open ocean. We can assume from when and where we find these eggs that they do abide by some sort of seasonal mating time. Many are found of the coast of South Africa during winter. Winter in South Africa takes place from June to August, and then juveniles are then found around Bermuda around April the next year. Well, the obvious first, the flexibility of the stomach is a clear evolutionary advantage, allowing the black swallowers to eat such large prey. There are many reasons why being able to eat enormous prey is such a benefit to the black swallowers. The main reason is that in areas of the deep ocean in which they inhabit, there is very little life and little to eat. And so when the black swallower does come across something, being able to swallow such a large fish whole means it will not have to feed for a while and it can go on surviving in the desolate open ocean. Its jaw somewhat resembles that of a snake, able to swing its bottom jaw open enough to swallow its large prey. It is not entirely sure what threats the black swallower faces, but in the deep ocean there are many things large enough to eat it, and many things large enough to be eaten by it. Ironically one of its biggest threats is its own insatiable appetite for enormous prey which can lead to the stomach tears and gas buildup from decomposing fish. Humans have been known to occasionally catch them as bycatch, but really don't have a good idea on their numbers, so we can't tell if this is causing much damage or not. Deep sea fish are generally quite safe from human interference, so we can assume they're doing fine, but really that's just speculation. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.